What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Flip That Truck. If you're not familiar with this, basically what we were trying to do is start with a cheap vehicle, upgrade, repair, stylize a little bit, and end up trading, selling, working our way up, kind of a wheeler dealer RC version. But what we've got here is the second truck in the series. This one came to us in kind of a, you know, state of ugly disrepair basically and uh, from there we've done a number of things and I think we've drastically improved the style and overall appearance of this truck this truck has been a little bit of challenging in some ways I bought it with limited you know information on it just kind of going based on the fact that it had some custom tube work that I could see through and see that with a little bit of modification it was going to look good and that I think we definitely accomplished from there I did a couple of other things like throwing in a Element Stealth X transmission so that I can get overdrive. We've put a matching spare tire on it and we ended up swapping the body to this Proline SR5 cab that I got at a smoking deal. When it came, it had tube work that came all the way up to the front and included a big metal bumper that was on there. I didn't really like the look of it and I just, in general, I wanted it gone. So I removed it and I did replace the front cross member with an Axial SCX10 2 front bumper cross member and threw on a Vanquish VS410 Pro front molded bumper. It's got a nice approach angle. It's got the give of a plastic bumper. The performance wise on it, it's going to be nice. It doesn't 100% match up to the lines of where I would like it to on this SR5 body, but that's mainly due to the positioning of the cage work and how and where the cab has to be. But performance wise, it's still gonna be good. And I don't know that there's a plastic front bumper that we'd be able to get that would be much better than this. Since the last episode, I did completely strip the powder coating off the cage and then repainted it with a gunmetal metallic wheel paint. It's kind of my favorite paint to use on cage work and get it at any auto parts store. But being that it's a wheel paint, it's a little bit more durable and it's got a nice heavy metallic flake in it. it can be a little temperamental to paint. You gotta make sure you get it at the right distance and the right flow. Otherwise it can get kind of a coarse uh, texture to it. But if you get it right, it looks good. It's basically the thing that I use on all of my cages. It's just kind of my go-to. But now everything looks a little bit more, uh, you know, freshened up. Doesn't look so beat up like that powder coating did after just years of abuse. And, you know, the longer I've owned this truck, the more stories and places that I've found that this particular truck was involved in. It is seemed to travel all over and had a lot of interesting stories attached to it along the way. But with that being said, I had a number of kind of lofty project goals for this thing. And the more and more I get into this series, the more and more I'm going to actually learn about how far to take certain things. I always initially look at things and just picture how I would do them, how I think that if I was building the truck in general, I would go after it. But I think for this series, what I need to do is kind of curb my, you know, goals for each one and just try and get it done, get it improved, and move it along, not try and make these things such long projects because this one, since the last update, it's been like 80 some days. So that's too long. There's no point in me of holding trucks this long. I need to just make a little bit of profit on each one and keep them rolling because big profit on each one is just not going to happen. That's just not the way things usually work out. If one happens that way every once in a while, fantastic. But other than that, I need to limit my time with each truck, get them in, get some stuff done to them and get them on the way. This one was the first time and well, being that it's only the second truck, I fell into that trap. So I had some goals of doing some pressed metal panels and I worked out the prototypes that really liked the process and that's all great. It worked on one side, but then I needed to do the other side. Then I needed to figure out how I was going to do the other filler panels. And it became a really big project with just, it, it was going to take up way too much time to try and get that accomplished. And in the end, I don't know that it was going to add the value that this whole project is intended to do. So therefore at this point, I've just I bailed on that part of the project and I just finished cleaning up the truck. I reinstalled the electronics in this. I shortened up the wires, re-soldered uh, things so that there just wasn't so much extra slack. I soldered to that new Holmes Crawlmaster Sport uh, 540 motor and everything's just a little bit more tidy and on the side. I built a simple electronics plate out of some thin aluminum and just kept it moving. I've got it in a good position. The 
body is mounted in the front with the two body posts. The one thing is, is that there is no rear body mount. It's only just retained by it not being able to come up too far with the cage. Not ideal and not something that, you know, I love the fact of. There is some options there for someone who was going to run it, but for me at this time, I think that I basically need to just say, this is what this truck is. It will be a good trail rig for whoever wants to drive it. And at this time I've decided to just leave the body clear. But what I did get was decals and paint masks for it. I was able to hunt some of these down locally from a guy who didn't use them on his custom project as he cut it up and just used the panels. So scored these for just a couple of bucks. I just a perfect little round out addition to adding a $10 body to this project. So the costs that I've incurred with this build have been the addition of that Stealth X transmission and putting a decent motor in this with that Holmes Crawlmaster Sport motor. I also installed the new Vanquish molded bumpers. Those are inexpensive, but do add some cost. I paid five bucks for a matching rear spare tire, which I think was worth it all day. Of course, we've got the $10 uh, body score that we got here and a couple bucks for the actual decals themselves. I needed a 48 pitch pinion, which I've included also and then beyond that it was pretty much just elbow grease now the biggest issue to this comes into the actual uh, sale or profit side of it I paid $325 for this truck when I initially got it and with it all cleaned up like this I've added a decent amount of costs with buying a new Stealth X transmission, a new Crawlmaster Sport, new bumpers, used tire and used body. So we're gonna have to add in that value. And I think what I'm going to do is basically just add the retail value of you know the transmission motor bumper setup and then a little bit of value on the body and rear tire, basically what I paid, and just a small amount of extra on the labor side. So profit on this one is going to be thin, but I think that where it's going to come in is the fact that this thing does have custom tube work, which is not cheap. And my guess is that this is gonna make someone a hell of a trail rig. It still leaves someone a ton of opportunity to add a bunch of custom touches and you know make it their own in general. But for now, I think that it's ready to go, it's cleaned up, and it's something that I don't mind leaving here here as is with my name on it. I'm gonna go through and get photos of this thing, get it listed up on my website. I've got a for sale section on there. I'll link to that in the description below. You can go check the website. You can see the breakdown of what this thing has and what the asking price is, if it's still available. Any vehicle that's been sold is marked that way. Anything that's not been is still available at that time. So if you have questions on price or if it's still available, anything like that, check the website first. So I'm gonna be on the hunt again for the next vehicle. And I think that my goal is going to be trying to find something with some custom tube work again, just because I think that really opens up some possibilities. I'm gonna try and stick with either an SCX-102, an Element, or a TRX-4. I think those are the three platforms that have the best likelihood of finding something that was built well and is still going to retain some resale value once it's uh, finished up. If you have something that you think I might be interested in, you can shoot me a message through Facebook or Instagram. Obviously, most things that I'm offered, I'm gonna have to turn down just if they're not right for the series. I'm pretty picky on what I'm looking to buy, but you can shoot me a message, just don't be offended if I'm not interested in purchasing. You know, Obviously, there can only be one at a time that I'm interested to purchase. So, Scale Nationals is right around the corner for me, and I've got three trucks that I have to build for that. So time for this series is going to be slightly limited, but again, I think that's where the whole premise of me getting the trucks and turning them quickly is going to be the big factor. Probably spend more time shopping and trying to find the next proper truck than I will actually holding them. This one, I'm definitely not going to make the mistake again of holding for multiple months like we did here. The comments and responses during this series have been some of the best and just really interactive. I know people can, it's the first time that I've really had used trucks on this channel, like trucks that I didn't build. I can't really remember too many times before where I've brought something else in like that and then you know, had it in video. It just, it's been very rare. I've almost always built my own vehicles. So this is something completely new for me. And I think people can see into it and see, you know, would you pay that? Would you not pay that? What would you do with it? And just the responses back and forth have been the best part of the series. And definitely the thing that makes me wanna keep doing this one, uh, even during these really busy times, just because of how, you know, 
interesting the comments and suggestions were during these builds. So I learned a lot during this particular build, and I think that it will definitely help the success of this series as we go, because this is one that I definitely hope continues for the long run, something that I can see ending with a gold truck and then starting it all over again, hopefully holding on to that gold truck when it's done. I had grand ideas of this series possibly being able to net me an actual class three truck that I can use for scale nationals. And if I can keep this thing going maybe in time and see something promising enough before that event, maybe it'll happen. But I can't wait too long. I don't have that long until that event is coming. So uh, I'm going to just have to keep moving forward as planned if something happens and I can just pick up a class three truck out of this series. Fantastic. If not, still got to build one of those during this whole thing as well. If you guys have any ideas or thoughts or, you know, paths you think I may have missed during this series, absolutely drop them in the comments below. This is something that I've absolutely never done before. And I'm actually having a lot of fun just kind of buying and selling these things. So, as always, thanks for watching. You guys are great. Hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. More flip that truck coming and faster. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you on the next one.